it's Rob and welcome to Axel's Garage. Today we got something a little special for you. Recently someone was asking if we had some videos of my mom doing baking. And my mom is no longer with us. She's gone about a year. She lived till she was almost 95 years old and we do have some great videos with her. So this video that you're about to watch is her making what she called Gaza Dead. And it's a Italian pastry and everywhere that she might say, or we might say in the video, apple turnover, think empanada. I don't know why we never thought of that before, but think empanada. This recipe has been in our family for years. My dad used to make them when he was alive. And then my mom continued the tradition up until her uh, 93rd year. Um, she wasn't able to make it in her 94th year because she didn't stick around that long. She has gone about a year, almost made 95 but we're gonna to continue to make this recipe and other family members and friends wanna make it as well. So we brought this video back from 2017. It was December 3rd, 2017, we made this video. This recipe comes from my dad's side of the family. It's actually my dad's sister, my Aunt Josie, who brought this recipe into the family. We don't know if it was from my dad's side or Aunt Josie's married side, not sure. Either way, it's a great video. Just remember, everywhere we mention apple turnover, think empanada, and please enjoy the video. We left it a little on the long side so that you could get the feel for what it was to be like in Grandma Rose's kitchen. Enjoy. Welcome to Axel's Garage. I'm Grandma Rose. Axel's Kitchen. Oh, uh, Axel's Kitchen. I don't know how to say that. In English. Oh, oh. Welcome to Axel's Kitchen. Me, Grandma Rose. <laughs> Today, I'm going to make in Axel's Kitchen, Gaza Dead. In English, it's like a apple turnover. All right. Say. I'm going to throw this at it, you know? <laughs> Today, in Axel's Kitchen, we're going to make Aunt Josie's Gaza Dead. And these are it. It's Robin. We're in Grandma's kitchen at Axel's kitchen. And we're in Grandma Rose's kitchen. It's a little tough to video in Grandma Rose's kitchen, so I'm going to have the camera in my hand most of the time. But we are making, what are we making? Gazette. Say it nice. Grandma. Gazette. We are making Gazette, which, from the best research I could do, is a pastry. They call it an Italian hand pie pastry. I, I don't know. Casada is the word that I've been able to find, but I'm getting yelled at when I use that word because it says it's called Casada. Now, where did this come from, Grandma? Italy. Sicilian. Okay. okay. Let me put the camera. Fourth inches. Those are very small. We know. We, this here is small because we're just practicing on the machine. It's better than rolling it. How do we normally do it? We normally roll it. Yeah. So why are we using the machine then? Because who's going to roll it? Who knew who's going to roll That's the way we make them, though. Why can't we use a machine? Why can't we do them the way we, that we've always we're done? We're doing them? the cinnamon sugar on all of them, don't you worry. you got to make them all one shape. Like a half a moon, otherwise your father will have to fit. All right, where'd these come from? Sicily. And who started making them? I mean, are you moving your ass Josie. right in front of the camera? I'm trying to do them like that. Aunt Josie is the one that brought this into the family. If there's any holes, you And how do you say it? Say it nice? Casa And how would you spell that? <laughs> C-A-S-S-A-D-A. -S -S See, yeah, okay, all right. All right, so spin your chair to me, Ma, a little bit, and explain what it is. It's lo It looks like, it's supposed to look like an apple turnover, only there's cheese in it and chocolate. Turn the other way a little bit, Ma. Yeah, but i got to help them over You're here. You're making this difficult for me. Don't make them square. It's got to be like an apple turnover. All right, this is a waste of my time. What's us this. Way? You don't like the machine? I like the machine, but it's not. You got eight? Yes, I have eight. Well, you gotta roll this a little bit. Just a little bit. 
I'm making them into raviolis. No, no. your father don't want that. Uh, it's fine. You can make them small. I don't mind making them small as long as they're, they're right. Don't give her too much dough. Don't make a square, honey. I won't. Make like an egg. better than me you're standing up. If one side is too oh. big you could always cut it off. Uh, no. Alright now and I tell us what's in the mixture. When you make the mixture what do you do? I have a, a three pound can of regatta, two tablespoons of sugar and a whole shaved Hershey bar. That's it? That's it. And you just mix it up really good? No you don't have, mix it up really good. You just fold everything in that it should be thick, not watery. When you mix it too much, it um, when you mix it too much, it gets liquid. You don't want that. Help her make that. All right, now the dough. The dough is flour, uh, yeast, we don't not have yeast, no yeast, baking powder. Three eggs, eight cups of flour. How much baking powder? Steve, you're not you're not making me concentrate on this. How much baking powder? Three tea, uh, tablespoons of uh, baking powder. That's got to be rolled a little bit. So now, why are we using the machine? You usually don't use a machine, right? You usually just roll because with the rolling pin. Because we have until twelve o'clock that they gotta leave. You do it the day before, not the same day that you had. Okay. Four. Okay. Go ahead. So, Amanda, about how thick are you rolling these out? It says four on the machine, but I'm going to go with a quarter, an eighth of an inch. Could that be the millimeter numbers? It's possible. I don't think so, though. You think it's an eighth? An eighth is like a rolling pin, like, give it a good roll. So a little thinner than an eighth, maybe? I guess. Okay. Can you cut it? You could make two out of that. Yep. Yeah. Make it one big one and one little one. See, you don't have to do this on itself like that. Just do it around it. Okay. That's what makes it square. I don't know how you guys do this. Oh, just press hard. That's it. Now you don't have to go over it a second time. Pull it. That's where you mess it up is when you do it. So when you go over it a second time, it mushes it back together. So here's the ones that have been made already. They kind of look like big ravioli. They're supposed to look like oversized ravioli. And we got you said apple turnover before. Yeah. It, You're confusing my viewers. Oh, yeah, apple turnover, exactly. But small apple turnovers. Yeah. Big ravioli. Give it a roll. Amanda, what do you think? Big ravioli, small apple turnovers. Correct. Okay. Oh. All right, so while they continue to make them, over here we have vegetable shortening. It's not whipped cream. That's vegetable shortening in a pot. Heating up okay. because they're gonna get deep fried. So to recap this madness, we have our filling, which is regatta cheese, sugar, chocolate, Hershey chocolate. It's got to be Hershey chocolate because Hershey originated in Italy, didn't you know? What else is in there? Sugar. What'd you say was in there? Sugar, regatta, chocolate. Go ahead. That's it. Sugar, record, chocolate, lightly stirred together. Don't over stir it because then it gets watery, apparently. Yes. All right. And we got that in a pot with a teaspoon okay. to make your, 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 your quantities. All right. And then we got the dough. The dough's got, what's the dough got? 
The Joel has water, flour, three eggs, three eggs, three eggs, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of sugar in the dough. Yep, a little bit, like two tablespoons. A little bit of sugar in the dough, and what else? Uh, baking powder. Baking powder, we got that. Eggs, we got that. Eggs. That's it. Okay. Three and eggs. Crisco. Yes. Three heaping okay. tablespoons. Three heaping tablespoons of what? Crisco. Crisco. Ask Grandma about the heaping tablespoons. All right, let, we, we, we're getting a little confused on this dough recipe. No, it's what you. What would you yeah. call this kind of dough, Ma, uh, Grandma? Uh, uh, Ma. Pastry dough. Pastry dough. What am I getting yelled at? Okay, so to start with the pastry dough, how much flour? You put seven cups on the board and a cup on the side. Okay, Same seven total cups. Cup. cups. All right, flour. Yes. Next. Next goes Crisco. No, baking powder. How much? Baking powder is two teaspoons, tablespoons. Yeah. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, but it has to be like topped off, like Levels. even level. Spoons. Okay. Then? Then you mix in the Crisco. How much? Three heaping tablespoons. She'll yell at you if they're not big enough. Heaping. Okay. Next. And then you like mix it with your hands to get out all the lumps. To, like, so you de-lump with your hands. De-lump with the hands. Then you make a well in the center of okay. a pile. Put three eggs. Three eggs in the well. In the well with two tablespoons of sugar. You just saw okay. the Crisco. And so We're not up to that yet. Yes, we, she just yeah. said that. You All right, after the, the eggs. After the, the well. eggs. And the whisk, sugar. Whisk the eggs around. In the well. In the well. Okay. Then you add water. Yes, then you add water as you're heating with your hands, and you add as much water as you think. As much water as you think? Yes. To get it to a nice doughy dough. Yes, and then you can add the cup of flour on reserve as if it gets too wet. Oh, so as it's sitting, if it's get wet, you can always add a little flour or wet your hands to add a little water? Yes. Okay. Now, normally we roll it out completely, right? Correct. But today, Grandma wants to change the recipe always don't, and have a no, machine. No, don't blame Grandma. It was Grandma don't mentioned don't the machine. It was my idea to go get it from the basement. Okay. So the machine was your idea. Yes. Why do we do that? We do things differently every time. Every time we make a recipe that we've been making forever, we do it differently for some reason. All right. So now we take our about a heaping Another teaspoon fork. of the mixture. Not really a heaping. It depends on the size of your oh, what? your dough. Well, the size that we're making is how much you put in. Just a teaspoon. Just a teaspoon. These are like ravioli size. These are smaller than they okay. usually are. These are much smaller than they usually. They're like this big. But the, the small ones big. I now, think are better. Now we're doing small ones. And I, I, I'm not opposed to the small ones. Because everyone throws out half a, a gaza dead every day, every year. Teaspoon yeah. in the large ravioli sized shell that we're making. They're using a, a pastry cutter to cut it off and then using a fork around the edge to really make sure that it's, it's tight together. They make a bunch of them. While they make a bunch of them, the Crisco or the vegetable shortening is in a pot and that's getting hot to about 375 degrees and up, you know, almost 400, 375 to 400, it's got it frying, you deep frying. Okay. So whatever your normal deep fry procedure is, but well, you're going to do it in vegetable shortening, not in fry oil. And then we're going to deep fry these brown until they're golden brown. When they come out of the deep fryer, they get sprinkled with a cinnamon sugar mix and then they're allowed to cool. The cinnamon sugar mix is important because for some reason we forgot that it had a cinnamon sugar coating on them yeah. and we just left them naked with, uh, what did we put? We it's, put a little confectionery yeah. sugar on them. Well, it says his, what it looks like. The cinnamon, well, cinnamon and sugar, yeah. right? Cinnamon and sugar. Don't spill it. So anyway, for years we forgot that we, we used to put this nope. on. Grandma didn't forget. She neglected to tell us. Oh, see, Grandma doesn't like the cinnamon sugar, so she... You know, said, oh, no, 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 you just sprinkle some confectionery sugar on it, and that's, that's it. But I remembered there was something missing, because I remember when I was a, a kid, I used to get sticky hands from eating them, and that's because of the cinnamon sugar. Apparently, Grandma doesn't like cinnamon, so she left that out of the recipe for, like, five years. Axel's Garage robs childhood home. What's the matter with my child? This is my childhood kitchen. I know, but instead of seeing Axel's kitchen, you see... I see, see mom's kitchen. We see grandma's kitchen, and grandma's kitchen's a lot tougher to video in. That's a little kitchen. So here's, here's Emily rolling through the machine. 
And what number are you coming up with? Eight. Eight, eight, eight. and then a four? Eight, 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 so what was that just now? Eight. Eight. eight folded eight. Now we're doing four. Well, I caught in at the middle. I wanted to know. Everybody's in a mood this morning. Now you're at four? Yes. yes. Oh, oh five. Leave it. Go. Emily has trouble counting from two all the way to four, so she you know. Oh, that's fine. All right. So there's our dough. Now that's enough dough for how much, Emily? You're in the nope. way. Use that one. You're gonna make two out of that piece of dough? This one? Yeah. yeah. No, that has like chocolate in it. Can you use a bigger knife or is that the right size knife? It's a little large. See, that wasn't even a full teaspoon. I do oh, it here you go. I do it bit. on purpose. Okay, so you do like two half teaspoons. I don't want it, I want it, don't want it to be too big. I think I'm gonna go this way with this one. It's about my hand, five by five-ish, I think. Now I'm taking a teaspoon, doing a little bit at a time. I guess it's about a full teaspoon by the time I'm done. But I don't want to do a lot, just in case. You fold it over, and you pat down the edges around where the filling is. And we have this little pastry cutter thingy. Cut around it to shape it like a ravioli-ish chapel turnover sort of. Then you take fork, press the edges. Not all the way through so you cut it, but enough to seal it. Alright, so what are we doing here? We're frying them. One at a time? Two at a time. Two at a time. Now, when do we put it in the sugar? As soon as it comes out, or we let it sit no, for a minute? We let the juice come out a little bit, and then we put it in. Drain them a little bit, and then we put them in the sugar. All seconds tops on a paper towel draining then I put them in the in the bath of cinnamon and sugar shake off the excess and then put them on the final baking sheet covered in paper towels just to let any extra oil drip out these aren't a greasy thing they usually serve either warm or room temperature but it's not like a greasy um, Carnival kind of deep fried doughy thing we did. Your father used to fry. Now I got the job. Who, me? Yeah. I would have fried. You fry. I'm sugar. See, you can't put two in at one time because then there's no room for it to roll over. You said two at once. I'm trying, but it didn't work. So as we pulled them out of the fryer, each by each, they went on the paper towels just quickly, 30 seconds tops, and then they got to go into the cinnamon sugar because if you leave them on the paper towels too long and they cool, the cinnamon sugar doesn't stick. So you really need two people at your fry station. You need a person that you dough rolling and a person that you're making. So this is 
Definitely best with an assembly line type project, right? It is. Several All right. But anyway, so everybody had a sugar. You're going to put them on a baking sheet, sort of stand it up like we have them here, and you put a, uh, some paper towel down so any excess oil drains off, and now they got the sugar and stuff. But now they got to wait, right? What is this? Is this the 23rd today? Yes. Yeah. Uncle Stephen's yeah. birthday. Today. Yeah, we've got to oh, yes. up. The 23rd. We're going to have these the first time Christmas Eve night, and then the second time on Christmas Day. They need to, because there's cheese in them, right? They need to be cool. So you let them cool, and we put them in a box. A lot of times we use shirt boxes, you know, like from a gift that you would put like a dress shirt in for a gift. So paper towels in the box in a cool place. They don't necessarily have to be refrigerated, depending on where you live. If it's cold outside, we could stick them in the garage, right? Um, they just need to be cool. What, like under 50 degrees? Yes, it's got to right? be cool, cool. And dry. doesn't have to be refrigerated, but if you don't have a cool place, if you live in one of those one places, lucky you, and you put them in the refrigerator. Um, and then you're going to take them out because serving them warm is best, room temperature, or maybe a little warmer than room temperature. I like them, you know, like five minutes in the toaster oven at 350, you know, and they're a little bit warm. Uh, we're going to show you what one looks like on the inside, all right, before we wrap it up. So that's the shirt boxes. That's what Amanda's doing now. She's actually got a a copy paper box that she's lining with paper towels and we're going to put them in there and that's how we're going to store them. All right? Here's our one nice pretty sample that came out. We put a little confectionery sugar on it when we were done. Show you what it looks like on the inside. Oh, that looks delicious. So, All right. it's like a, so it's got a little bit of chocolate. It's got some cinnamon sugar on the outside. Emily, come on over. Give it a shot. Amanda, you want to come over right now? Emily, someone else will know who the all right, Amanda, come on over, give it a shot, see how we did. Well, this I year. get the nose. Because you were being difficult, that's why you got the nose. I got my nose. Good. Nailed oh, it. Uh -huh. Nailed it. Uh -huh. All right. As we were talking about these things. Chocolate. chocolates. As we were talking, would you like a bite of your nose? No. Grandma? No, no, I don't like You don't want Emily's nose one? All right, well, as we were talking about these things, what we realized is it's got a creamy mixture on the inside, right, with some chocolate. And it's got a pastry on the outside that was deep fried. And then it's got some powdered sugar and cinnamon sugar on the outside. This is an Italian fried Oreo. It's an Italian deep fried Oreo. Right? <coughs> what do you mean no? I, exactly I didn't what it do is. anything. I was Free blowing the my nose. Blowing your nose? I hope you washed your hands after you touched old food. Anyway, it is, what do we call these? Casa dead. Casa dead, she said. And when you look it up online, it's, what is it? Casada. Casada. And it's described as an Italian stuffed... Hand pie. Hand pie. Pretty, dessert so pastry. The reason why they call it Casada. Why do they call it Casada? Talk loud. The reason why... Thousands they, and millions of people have to hear you. All right. The reason why they call it Casada uh, is because it's regatta. Regatta is... It's one way of saying it's filled with ricotta. Cause, ah. Because cassada is ricotta cream. You couldn't have said that when I had the camera on you? Well, I thought of it now that you said the right way is cassada. All right, so Italian guys are dead. That's it today from Axel's Kitchen. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>